Hi there, thanks for joining. In this video, I'll be discussing a, a case that came to our firm. Again, for confidentiality reasons, I'll just use the client's first name, Paula. Paula came to us um, for a spousal sponsorship application. She had three marriages in the past and, and her spouse had several marriages as well. And she was a little bit nervous because she had sponsored someone in the past that one, she might not be eligible and two, that the genuineness of her relationship might be in question. Rightfully so because she had sponsored someone else and so she was wondering that maybe the officer might question this particular sponsorship. The other thing, uh, part of this application, was that the client was deaf. And so the communication between the firm and the client was a bit challenging. A lot of times, you know, explaining something over email can be confusing. And so phone calls are the best way to communicate information, especially when it comes to complex matters such as a spousal sponsorship. So, with good news is that after about a year, her spousal sponsorship did come approved, but it had its own challenges. We did have to go through her entire application. We had to ensure that she had received, you know, the marriage certificate and the divorce certificate of every single relationship. There was a common law relationship that was not mentioned um, as well in the past that we had to address. We had to do this because we don't want the client to be charged with misrepresentation and that could cause bans and bars and so forth. So we ensured that that was disclosed to the officer as well. And the client was correct. I too question the uh, vivid appear appearingness of the marriage. I believe the story, but we get one chance to disclose that relationship on paper. And as I'm sure you are looking at your own spousal sponsorship and you're thinking, I don't have a lot of documents to prove my genuine relationship. So how do we do this? And so a lot of times it's really common sense. It's reference letters and really the quality of reference letters that your friends and families are providing. It's your own personal statement. Disclose in there what you like about your partner, what you don't like about your partner, how your relationship progressed, you know, how you met, where you met. Um, maybe a really exciting date that you guys went on that, that meant a lot to you, a gift that he or she may have given you. Personalize it as much as possible. If you are hiring someone else or if somebody else is helping you, make sure when it comes to personal statements and reference letters that you draft them. Don't let someone else draft, like a representative draft your personal statement because it becomes generic. This is your opportunity to speak to your officer your relationship. Of course, joint documents and, and relationship documents such as photos and, and email exchanges and text messages obviously add value to the application. But if you don't have all of these, at least speak to the officer on the personal statement. Disclose to the officer why you lack certain documentation. Be frank with the officer. And hopefully, if, if you do a good job, there's no interview. If you don't, you can actually in your personal statement say that we actually welcome an interview with the officer. Allow us to present our case in front of you. This allows transparency, honesty, and it's something that the officers usually get quite excited about. If there's a question on your spousal sponsorship that the firm can help, please do give us a call. Thank you, until next time.